please feel welcomed. I would now allow members to introduce themselves for the record. Good morning, Chairperson Lorraine Boita. Thank you. Good morning, Chairperson Phil and Christians. Good morning. Good morning again, Chairperson uh, Mesuli Kama. Good morning, Chairperson Ayanda Burns. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, members, and thank you for your presence here today. I have noted that the HOD logged in. This is, like I stated, a meeting in terms of the Western Cape Second Adjustment Appropriation Bill. I will now allow the HOD to indicate that she is indeed present. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Yes, I am very present. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Honourable Chair, and, and to members as well. Thank you so much for your attendance, Advocate Pillay. We are delighted to have you and the, the, um, the officials here. I have noted an apology from members Makamba Boicha as well as Malikaya Keko, which will be recorded. Um, also, a, a, um, an apology from the Minister for Community Safety. HOD, I will allow you to make introductory remarks, but we will then allow you to introduce any additional staff members during the question and answer time once we refer a relevant question to a particular official. I trust you find that in order, but uh, is there yes. any opening remarks from your side? Yes, Chair, if, if you will allow me, Minister Fritz, as you indicated, has apologized. So he sincerely apologizes for not being here. However, he was going to be making some opening remarks. And if you will give me an opportunity, I will make those remarks on behalf of the minister and the department. By all means. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, my department, like many others, has had to think innovatively to ensure service delivery excellence amid the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown and a constrained socioeconomic environment. We have reimagined and reshaped many of our programs in order that we make a more tangible impact on the lives of the most <coughs> vulnerable in our province. Today, the department will be presenting the adjusted budget for the 2020-21 financial year. The first adjusted budget estimate, which is aimed to mitigate against the impact of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, has revised its original allocation of 804 million to 776 million. The current uh, result is an allocation of 784 million. So, honourable chair and, and, and members, we are pleased to announce that this represents a nominal increase. Um, of one, just over 1.08% uh, or 8.3 uh, million in addition to, um, to the department. This increase will contribute towards improving the safety in our province as it will contribute towards the implementation of the Western Cape Safety Plan area-based teams within the province's crime spots. Two million has been allocated to that. It will assist in the training and placement of peace officers across the province. An additional two million has been allocated for that. And then also to support the implementation of the Safety Ambassadors Project, which will see the recruitment, training and deployment of 1,000 youth, um, women and disabled persons as violence prevention implementers in terms of the objectives and imperatives of the safety plan and 20 million has been allocated to the department to that end for this financial year an additional and an additional 20 million in the next financial year as well. To ensure the Western Cape government continues in its efforts to innovate and provide service delivery excellence, the department is also redistributing approximately 2.1 million to other departments. Um, the, these funds will assist the Department of the Premier in the development of software systems for safety projects, which is 1.6 million, but these are actually projects of the Department of Community Safety um, that will be, um, however, the funds will be transferred to the CEI component of DOTP that manages it centrally. A further 500,000 has been shifted to the Department of, um, of Economic Development. 
um, for the uh, Western Cape Economic Development Partnership uh, for safety initiatives. In total, the department has realigned uh, this COE budget by surrendering a net amount of 13 million to the Provincial Revenue Fund. The, um, um, the revenue has also been, our own revenue has also been realigned and was reduced from 469,000 to 292,000. This represents a reduction of 177,000, which constitutes um, the item staff debt and recovery of revenue from previous financial years. As I conclude on behalf of Minister, I want to again highlight the increase in funds for the Provincial Safety Functions Program. The program's budget has increased from 469.8 million to 494.8 million, which amounts to an increase of 25.1 million. This increase will ultimately enable the department to implement the Western Cape Safety Plan through its initiatives, as mentioned, the area-based teams, peace officers, and the safety ambassadors uh, project. As a province, we are committed to halving the murder rate over the next 10 years through a range of law enforcement and violence prevention initiatives. Uh, combined, these will ensure that we address crime where and when it happens. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, <coughs> Acting HOD, for the introductory remarks on behalf of the Minister. Members, just to confirm again, in terms of virtual committee meetings, I will refer you to the ATC of the 17th of April 2020 in terms of our rules of engagement here today. Like I indicated earlier on, the purpose of the meeting is to discuss vote number four, community safety, and to, and to consider um, and, for the, uh, um, and for the committee to consider its report there too. So thank you so much, members, for your attendance here. Also, a special welcome to Advocate Peterson, um, our Acting CEO for the Western Cape Liquor Authority. Thank you for your presence here as well. Members, it is now 11.08. We have 45 minutes from 11 o'clock to conclude our meeting. There will be additional meetings uh, with the department in December, but we will then try to commence straight away, and I will be tabling the vote for community safety, like I indicated, um, like I indicated earlier, uh, vote number four, the documents has been circulated, and I consider the documents to have been perused and read adequately. Members, I will now table pages number 53 to number 58. Also, right from the beginning, I will table all the annexures from 64 to 68. If I can get an indication from any member who would like to ask any questions specifically to pages 53 to 58 or any of the annexures, I will take a round. I note member Karma, that's one. I see member Christians. In that order, I see Member Barnes. I will, it's now, let me, okay, I have those names. Member Kama, you may go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and let me welcome the remarks from the uh, uh, Minister and the HOD as delivered by the, the HOD. The Chair, uh, I welcome also the, the the increase in the in the in the in the budget of the department. But what what perhaps I want to understand, uh, 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 Chair, uh, uh, is that or want us to understand is that this is not enough uh, for the work that uh, we are supposed uh, to do, or if we are to wage any fight against crime in the province. And want to understand, therefore, Chair, as to what programs are put in place to respond to the increasing uh, gang murders in the prov in the province, and what uh, budgetary commitments have been made in that regard, and 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 in that uh, Chair, what are uh, what programs are there to address even the issues of uh, extortion in townships or the response of government to 
uh, the issue of taxi violence, uh, where we see many people lo losing their lives in public spaces uh, uh, like the taxi, the taxi ranks. And, and actually, Chair, uh, uh, as to uh, what funds uh, uh, really uh, have been put in, pay in place uh, to support uh, or give meat to the uh, 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 so-called uh, safety plan of the province uh, uh, in order to be effective in responding to crime and really half the matter of uh, a matter rate in the province as envisage. Uh, 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 lastly, Chair, on the shifting of, of funds, I see that there are funds that have been shifted from CPFs uh, to, to um, neighborhood watch uh, projects. Now, what I want to understand, I, I really want if the HOD can talk to us about this decision. Uh, and, and whether is there an assumption if really uh, funding and supporting CPFs uh, uh, is, is on them renewing their term, uh, uh, which there have been challenges thereof. Uh, uh, but uh, is there an assumption or a decision in the department to say that would have not had CP, uh, uh, CPFs in any time in this current financial year such that would transfer uh, 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 so much uh, 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 funds to the neighborhood watches, and what has been the impact of this transfer there of, uh, uh, or what is an envisaged uh, impact there of uh, 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 of this transfer to the neighborhood watch? Thanks, uh, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Kama. Um, I've noted the questions, members. Um, in us moving forward, we are dealing specifically with pages 53 to, 50 to 63, but the first five pages, um, I welcome and I um, appreciate the questions, Member Kama. Um, I do know a large extent is extremely broad, uh, but it's obviously vital that we afford uh, um, the department to provide input and answers to that question. Um, I know we dealt with the CPF matter a while ago, um, and in understanding that the SEPs has placed that moratorium on the CPF elections when we discussed it the last time, I know that has since been lifted, uh, but I will allow the department to also answer regarding funding to CPFs in that regard. But thank you so much. Members, we are dealing with 53 to 58. If you can reference any page number, our procedural officer will will attempt to to go to that particular page as well so other members are able to follow i now see member phil and christians thank you much uh, thank you very much chair just um um if uh, the department just tell us uh, you know i always mention this that we are giving two million to um the training of the and the placement of peace officers um now we we, we have given money um, uh, to the city, I believe this, uh, to the city, but we um, don't have any mandate when it comes to those. Uh, um, we don't have a mandate when it comes to uh, peace officers in the city. Uh, if uh, Advocate Belay can just tell us um, the monitoring of those, I've, I've mentioned it before that even as a committee, or um, and the, uh, we don't have oversight over the money that goes to uh, peace officers, um, uh, the two million. Um, I, I would want us just to explain that, and then of course, you know, I always welcome money that goes to neighbourhood watches. Um, um, I'm, I'm also uh, I always welcome that. Um, just the one thing that I've mentioned, I think um, a couple of months ago is that uh, certain areas are affected with crime and certain areas are more affluent to others. And I've asked it before, and maybe I'll just do it again. If uh, the department is not looking at a level where they can assist uh, communities uh, that is crime, and I know um, officers has been deployed, but if we just look at the money given to neighborhood watches, isn't there a a level that we can implement. I've asked that before. And then just the last question, um, how are we do that? I see that HOD did say in the opening address for, on behalf of the minister, 
And we know that they want to halve the murder rate in the next 10 years. How's that monitoring taking place? And are uh, we making inroads? And is there enough money? Um, uh, there's never enough money, but is there uh, sufficient to, to uh, reach that objective to half the murder rate in the next 10 years? Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Christians, Member Barnes, and then Member Mare and Member Vinfogel in that order. Thank you, Chairperson. My question is on page 57, uh, subsection 3.2 on the um, police ombudsman. Um, according to my reading, Chair, it is stated that understanding there is happening because of the posts that were not filled uh, in the past financial year. My question, therefore, becomes that what was the number and details of posts that were not filled in the sub program? My second question there is also what progress has been made with the filling of the vacancy of the ombudsman and whether the department can confirm that the former ombudsman have been employed in the department on another position. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Barnes. Member Marie. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman. Uh, I want to say that, you know, I, I, I feel so sorry for this minister. He, he knows, as well as I know, that you cannot throw money at crime. You must throw the law at crime. If you want to solve crime, use the law against criminals. No amount of money on anything, whether it's... Um, a safety plan or whether it is uh, safety ambassadors or peace officers, it means nothing if you have a liberal justice system, liberal criminal procedure act, liberal judges and magistrates that let criminals roam freely on our streets, parole, early parole, etc., etc., light sentences. So, Minister, all I can say here, you've done your best, you've done a very good job. And I think if you were the National Minister of Police, things would have been different here. So I, unfortunately, the only thing I want to say in this budget, Minister, good luck. Thank you so much. A liberal constitution, you will do nothing to stop crime. Thank you so much, Member Marie. Member Van Vogel. Thank you, Chair. Chair, my question is on page of point of reference so is the realignment of the 2020 and 2021 compensation uh, of employees baseline. So my question there is, uh, what I want to know is the total of posts that will be affected by the reduction on COE's expenditure and what is the motivating mot motivation behind this? And can the department prepare data for the committee on the amount for COEs that has been surrendered on each year since 2009 and the number of posts affected? Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, members. I will now hand over to the department, um, to, the, uh, to the acting HOD advocate, Pillay, will then direct if there's any particular question that will be answered by any other official. Thank you so much. Advocate? Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you very much, Honourable Chair. I will attempt to uh, answer most of the questions to the best of my ability and then also refer to, um, to my colleagues, um, especially in relation to the questions that uh, speak to the COE of the department. Uh, so if I could please then, in terms of Honourable Member uh, Karma's question, um, in relation to uh, the um, uh, the assistance that we are uh, providing and uh, us linking it to, to the uh, murder rate and uh, as well as um, our interventions in, in communities. Um, I think, uh, Chairperson, it would be uh, really great, I think, going forward at some time when the committee has time uh, for um, for you to afford um, Dr. Keith Clutie and myself the opportunity to present on the fully on the recovery uh, plan, uh, the safety focus area uh, to the committee. 
Uh, we have done a lot of work in, in that regard. Uh, we are approaching uh, the safety focus area uh, through the lens of a life course approach as well as a public health approach and an integrated law enforcement and violence prevention uh, approach. So uh, by that, um, what I mean is um, that uh, we are not looking at law enforcement in isolation of uh, violence prevention initiatives, but rather that how do they all come together, but come together in a very localized space. So um, we are in the process of establishing area-based teams. The area-based teams that will be established uh, by the 18th of December will be, and this is based on uh, the uh, high rate of murder in these areas. So the area-based teams will be in Kailicha, in Nyanga, Delft, Bishop Lavis and Hanover Park, which would be the first round. And the area-based teams, as I indicated, will consist of law enforcement as well as violence prevention. And we're expecting Western Cape governments, as well as the whole of society, including community-based structures like CPFs and neighborhood watches, to all be involved at that local level. And we would then implement data-led and evidence-based interventions in those areas to give us the desired impact towards halving the murder rate. As we all would know, just having a law enforcement response to a problem will not solve the murder rate in the gang situation going forward. We have to deal with the causes. We have to deal with the real issues that are faced by our communities in those areas. So by the life course approach, we will be looking at an individual while the person's mother is still pregnant. How do we impact positively um, in relation to the pregnant mother that will ensure there's a positive trajectory in terms of that child's life? And we will then have interventions throughout a person's life from cradle to grave. And each Western Cape government department needs to play their role in terms of that trajectory and continuum. So we're very excited about that, Che. It's a new way of doing business for this department uh, especially. We will then roll out area-based teams in Mfoleni, Harare, Guguletu, Cryfontaine, and Mitchell's Plain. And thereafter, we will roll out area-based teams, one in the southern and western area that's not covered by these murder stations, and then five area-based teams in the district municipal space. So we ensure that we cover the entire province. We've already engaged with the SAPS uh, provincial commissioner and her senior team. We've engaged with the city of Cape Town. We've engaged with the district and local municipalities to identify the areas in which would be most critical in in terms of establishing the area-based teams. Now, in this on the area-based team level, we will then bring in the interventions by the safety ambassadors, the peace officers, et cetera, to support all the interventions. So it'll come into one place. And that's the role we see of uh, the CPFs and the neighborhood watches going forward as well. So it's not going to be just funding for EPP performance, but how do we fund these evidence-based interventions that will have an impact, but all the partners in that local space come together to render these interventions. So it's collective, it's an integrated and a transversal approach where we're pooling in the resources to be able to do that. And as um, was said, there's not always enough money, but if we pool our resources together towards a common golden end, we should be able to achieve this. Um, in terms of the CPFs, um, this, yes, there was a reduction in the funding of the CPFs because, as we know, many of the CPFs could not hold their AGMs due to the um, uh, due to the pandemic and uh, due to the fact that gatherings were not allowed. The provincial commissioner then placed a moratorium on the continuation of AGMs. However, that mo moratorium has since been lifted, and the Department of Community Safety is an active participant in the task team to ensure that the CPFs have their AGMs. Now, as I said, our funding model is going to look different going forward. It's not just going to be based on Section 18 of the SAPS Act, but how as, as partners we come together in a, in a space and collectively have interventions which we would like to then uh, support. Um, the neighborhood watch projects, we identified neighborhood watch projects that could support the COVID response. So we funded projects for some neighborhood watches so that we could ensure there was social distancing and wearing of masks, et cetera, especially in the Kailicha and Eastern Sub-District because the Department of Community Safety is the lead for that hotspot um, area. 
Uh, but however, going forward, the neighborhood watches would also be part of our model, the area-based uh, model. Member Christians, I, uh, in terms of your question, um, Chair, I'm trying not to take too much of time, um, is in relation to the peace officer. Uh, I think, Member Christians, you were referring to the fact that the Department of Community Safety does not have uh, oversight over law enforcement at this time. However, we have recognized this shortcoming and challenge, and we are currently reviewing the Western Cape Community Safety Act, and we will be changing that to allow for oversight over law enforcement and similar structures should that be the case going forward. So uh, in terms of the peace officers, the department will train and fund peace officers, and they will mainly be placed within the district municipal space, uh, because as we know, many of the rural municipalities have very minimal law enforcement capacity on that level. We will unfortunately not be paying stipends to individuals, except if it is, for example, a work placement, and they, thereby we use our, expand, our EPWP grant to be able to pay a, a stipend um, towards our work opportunities, which will be chrysalis graduates. We will try as far as possible to assist the district municipalities. However, just to remind the, the committee as well that the Department of Community Safety does fund district municipalities for safety interventions within their space. So we would also expect them to co-produce with us, and it should be a partnership. Um, Member Barnes, I'm, I will ask my colleagues to please answer on the Western um, uh, uh, the Western Cape uh, Provincial Ombudsman's understanding of post, if they can. But in terms of the, the Western Cape Police Ombudsman, uh, Mr. Johan Brandt, yes, he has resigned as the Ombudsman. He's, however, employed by uh, the Economic Development Partnership, not the Department of Community Safety. However, the Department of Community Safety has a um, an, a um, agreement with the uh, Economic Development Partnership to um, establish and facilitate the establishment of the area-based teams as well as to assist with safety initiatives. Now, this uh, uh, funding to the EDP was um, in place before the department actually took on uh, the safety plan fully. As the members would know, at, at some point, the department of the premier was running with the safety plan. However, we've taken it over now together with the Department of Health. Um, Member Vinfokel, your uh, questions were also based uh, on the uh, COE and, and the post. If I could please ask um, Lindy, I'm not sure uh, my colleague Lindy Gavinder who's on the platform, if she would be able to assist with some of that. And Chairperson, if not, we will have to then provide the information after the sitting. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, um, Chairperson and honorable members. Um, I, I can confirm that the Office of the Ombudsman currently only has one vacancy. It's a level eight position, which is an investigating officer. Uh, that uh, position is also currently in a shortlisting phase. So other than that one post, all other vacancies have been filled uh, to date. Um, in terms of the COE, I will also ask our CFO to add, um, but in terms of the impact of that uh, 30 million that we've um, basically surrendered, uh, we had at that point uh, around 22 positions in a recruitment process, which is now um, been put on hold. We are, however, focusing on 11 critical positions in the department, which is also all in the recruitment phase uh, in an attempt to then finalize it before the end of the financial year. Uh, which is deemed critical in terms of our service delivery. Uh, but I'll also ask the CFO if he, with your permission, Chairperson, he has anything to add uh, on the, the cut of 13 million. No problem at all. Uh, you may go ahead, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairperson. Good morning, members. Uh, other than the, the 13 million that's been reduced, we must remember that the 13 million reduction is a transversal reduction, not just applicable to, to the department uh, itself, but uh, others uh, on a national, provincial, and as well as the local level uh, where COE uh, reductions has been affected across the board. So, so that the 13 million uh, and it's projection across the MTF years uh, is, is, is with that in mind, the amount of posts or the costing of the posts uh, that's been reduced, uh, Chairperson, uh, we do not have that uh, uh, 
uh, um, amount available or that budget available, we'll have to we'll have to cost it um, and then provide the information after the sitting. If that's if that's fine. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Um, our procedural officer will be making a note um, on that. Um, members, <coughs> we are now 14 minutes away. What I will do at this stage is I will table the entire vote from 53 to 63, and I will afford members between 60 and 90 seconds if there is any urgent question or point of clarity that you would want to ask. Um, I do want to highlight that we've seen how members are using parliamentary privileges like parliamentary questions, for example. And I know Member Kama um, asked the one question on the police ombudsman as well. So members, we have our parliamentary privileges um, to request information. This committee will take resolutions as well. But for the next 60 to 90 minutes, I will go through the list and afford each and every member before we hand over to um, the department for closing remarks and answers before we then deliberate and conclude our business for today. So, Member Kama, I note your hand. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, may, may, may I please ask uh, uh, clarity seeking questions, Chair, on, 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 on page 63? Uh, on the financing uh, part of the 24 million rand, I would want to 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 first get a clarity chair on the on the placement officers, a uh, placement of peace officers, yes, training and placement of of peace officers. Uh, uh, whether I, I know, member Christians asked a question on the peace officers, but what I, I want to understand now is that are we here talking about a a a, a a, a, a transfer to the Chrysalis uh, uh, Academy, or is this a separate process of training uh, 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 peace officers, understanding that even the academy does uh, uh, train and, 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 and therefore later struggle with the placement of uh, uh, peace officers. Uh, on the 20 million of the safety ambassadors chair, uh, quickly, it's uh, I, I want to I want to get an understanding uh, in terms of these ambassadors, uh, their recruitment, uh, 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 their scope of 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 of, of operation. Uh, 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 so I just want to get clarity around uh, this actual um, um, implementation of these uh, ambassadors and where are they going to be stationed. Uh, it, it deployed actually, and and a sense of what are we responding to by implementing uh, that? Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Kama. Member Bands, your 60 seconds. If you do wish to take it. Member Christians. Member Bosman. I'm good. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Member Buata. Thank you, Chair. I will pass. Thank you so much. Member Van Vogel. Members, with your, in the, um, with your permission, I will just go to the members that didn't indicate again. Member Barnes. Member Christians. I will now note Member Peter Murray. Your 60 seconds, sir. Thank you. I would just like to ask the department, how long do you intend having ambassadors, peace officers, and uh, CPFs, uh, and how, how much, uh, when do you expect a turnaround in the Crime Association because of their employment? Uh, uh, can we, will you be prepared to show us a graph 
to show the, the efficacy of all these ambassadors and peace officers uh, that crime has gone down because of their deployment, or is it the same whether they are there or they are not there? What impact have they had? I'd like to you to just quickly answer me. What impact did they have on crime statistics? Thank you, Member Marie. Uh, Member Kama, is your hand still up? Is that uh, previously? Thank you so much, members. I will now hand over to the department for, for answers as well as for any concluding remarks. And thereafter, we will deliberate in order to conclude our business for the day. Advocate, over to you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, just in terms of uh, the, the questions in relation to the, the peace officers. So the peace officers are additional. Um, to the uh, Chrysalis graduates that have, some of them, as you know, have been trained um, as peace officers. Um, so, and as I indicated, they would be mainly uh, placed uh, in the rural or district municipalities. And if I can just name them, so it's Lanesburg Municipality, uh, Prince Albert Municipality, Beaufort West, uh, Witzenberg, Bierevalle, and then Langeberg Municipality. So those are the municipalities that have been identified for the placement of the peace officers. Um, in terms of the safety ambassadors, uh, Honorable Chair and members, we were responding uh, to the uh, Western Cape um, re uh, Province Recovery Plan, where the focus is on job safety and well-being. So the uh, safety ambassadors um, are going to be um, appointed by the department, and we will be creating 1,000 additional work opportunities uh, by doing so. So the uh, safety ambassadors will support both the, the um, jobs uh, focus area as well as the safety focus areas and we will be placing them in crime hotspots across the province but also linked to our new area-based uh, model. If I can just add, um, as um, the members would know, the Department of Community Safety has always administered its own EPWP um, processing or administration. So uh, we've always um, ensured that timesheets were completed, contracts were put in place. We followed up with the placement institutions to enable stipend payments to uh, the uh, beneficiaries. But we've taken a decision as part of the repositioning and repurposing of our department to be more service delivery orientated to actually outsource that function. And in doing so, we will be releasing at least 11 staff members to be able to be involved in direct service delivery and not just doing administration of timesheets. So um, th that amount has been allocated so we could pay stipends for 1,000 safety ambassadors for a period of 12 months. And we will then, um, be, look, hopefully, if, if we can show a success, that uh, provincial treasury may give us an additional allocation. So it's 20 million for this year and 20 million for, for, for next year. In terms of, of the impact that was being uh, referred to uh, by Honorable Member Marais, um, if I could say in the past, it would be very difficult. We do monitor the murder rate on a, on a weekly basis. I present to the um, cabinet on the murder rate and where we are going uh, you know, as a province. It is also very shocking if, with the release of the crime statistics on the 13th of November by the SAPS, the quarterly statistics for July to September, to note that over 80% of the country's gang-related um, uh, criminal incidents are uh, due to Western Cape um, criminal activities. Um, so therefore, our new way of doing things in terms of our interventions being data-led, so we have a data committee in place that, that will be monitoring, uh, collating the various sources of data, monitoring the data. We will be using that data to, to guide our evidence-based interventions in the area-based levels, and we will be tracking and monitoring and redefining our approach if need be. So we will be doing that, um, Honourable Chair and members, going forward. So we're looking forward... Um, to the results of, of monitoring and tracking going forward. And as I indicated, it means 
the whole, all the Western Cape government departments, as well as, as the whole of society. So we, we, we're looking at a crime through urban design involving in the infrastructure, um, our Department of Transport and Public Works, looking at the infrastructure projects, looking at environmental affairs and development planning, what they could bring, human settlements, how do how are houses built? How can they? How can we we structure them better? So, um, as I said, we're very excited and we're great if we are given an opportunity to present to the committee on our new way of doing work uh, going forward. Che, if I can then end on that note, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for the opportunity uh, to present uh, to the standing committee. Um, we we are always reassured of your support and um, the fact that we have. Uh, received an additional eight million as a department is a show of good faith in the direction in which we are going in the very important work that we have to perform um, on behalf of um, the Western Cape government and uh, the communities uh, or the vulnerable communities of, of the Western Cape as well. Thank you, Chair. Advocate, thank you so much. Please forgive me for not putting on my camera, but we do appreciate um, your attendance and feedback and answering the questions today. Members, <clears throat> we are due to end very soon, but may I, with your indulgence, um, Advocate Peterson, um, is there any remarks that you would want to make for the next 30 seconds to 60 seconds? I know some of the members have been engaging you via email already in your post as the acting CEO for the Liquor Authority. Is there any comment from you, ma'am? <clears throat> I trust that we will hear more from the acting CEO at a later stage. But members, at this juncture, let me once again say thank you to the department, to all the officials for, <coughs> for answering questions today and for engaging the members to, um, to the department. You are now excused. And once again, thank you so much for attending today. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Members, as we conclude our business for Today, our procedural officer will be flighting <coughs> will be flighting the consideration and the adoption of our report, and we will be submitting any further recommendations or requests for information. I now note Member Bota. Members, are you able to hear Member Bota? Oh, Member Bosman, so sorry. Member Bosman? Uh, no, Chairperson, I just wanted to say um, that I'd like to propose that we move the uh, budget for adoption. Thank you so much, Member Bosman. Chair? Yes, Member Bota. Support. Thank you so much. That has been noted. I note Member Kama. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, uh, I, 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 I move that uh, the, 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 the committee considers to at least uh, record the, 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 that the ANC does not support uh, uh, the, the bill in terms of Rule 90. Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Kama. That will be duly recorded in terms of the standing rule 90. Is there any other view? Or are we able to proceed? To our procedural officer, are you able to flight the reading of the report? Thank you so much. In terms of the input from Member Bosman, as well as Member Bota, the Standing Committee on Community Safety. We have deliberated on the subject of vote four, and this has been referred to us in terms of the Western Cape Second Adjustment Appropriation Bill, and it will read that the report that it is supported. Furthermore, in accordance 
with standing rule 19, the African National Congress has expressed its minority view to not support the vote. Members, I trust that you find that in order. I will further state that at this juncture, if there is any additional request for information or um, that we are needing, um, I see you, Member Bosman. Member Bosman. And then Member Kama. Chair, Chair, mine, while we are still waiting for Member Bos, uh, Bosman, mine was to just say uh, if, if the procedural officer can note the request that has been made by the department for an opportunity to present on what um, uh, the HOD was talking about mm. in terms of the hair and the Dr. Clute. Thanks. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. Member Bosman. Oh, your hand is down now. Members, if there's any further request, I will request that between now and Monday afternoon, if you are able to even email that as well. I know we all have a busy day leading up to the end of today, but once again, thank you. And this meeting is now promptly adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And thank you, Wasim and everyone.